value. So brand value is something um, that many, many companies will publish information on. This is actually from a company called Kantar, a business consultancy, who kind of quantify what a brand is worth. Um, and really, as I say, what we're interested in doing is we, we, we collected a series of web pages that were generally related to talking about business, uh, talking about different companies, and so on. That sort of, so on that, which companies tend to get mentioned most often? Is it the brands that are most valuable? Um, now, what you can see is so these two graphs are sort of showing the same thing. Uh, the bottom right one is just the zoom in of the top left one. Um, what you can see is there is a very sort of weak correlation between the two. In general, the more prominent brands tend to be the more valuable brands. But there are some sort of exceptions. And, and you know, this tells you a little bit about how the brands are being represented online. So the ones at the bottom right, let me get this right. So these are the ones that are disproportionately more prominent than you would expect by virtue of their brand value. They tend to be uh, dominated by the media and entertainment brands, so that would be things like the social media, the search companies, the technology brands, and that's probably just reflective of just how ubiquitous these brands generally are online, and the fact that we were explicitly looking for pages related to business. So these companies that offer business services tend to be more sort of commonly mentioned. Uh, the ones at the top left, so the ones that are less prominent, tend to be the luxury brands. So really what that tells us is that that's probably reflective of the fact that they have high brand values generally, but also they're less reliant on things like search engine optimization. They don't need to sort of be all over the internet to get people to go to their websites. They, they get their business through kind of word of mouth. Um, land, domain landscape analysis, sorry, I'm, I'm aware of time, so I'll try and chop through these pretty quickly because we've still got a few left. Um, so this was looking at uh, the proportion of domains across a series of domain name extensions and of different domain name lengths which are registered versus accessible. Um, again, I won't go through all the detail now, but the thing to say, and it won't surprise anyone, uh, is that short domain names uh, across common domain name extensions, there's almost none left. So they're almost, so all two, three, four dot com um, domains are already registered. Uh, dot five, there's a bit more of an availability. Um, but all the, the dictionary uh, domain names are already taken. So okay, this is kind of important when it comes to thinking about, you know, if you're launching a new brand, where do you target? I mean, and I guess the thing to take away is, you know, there, there are, as we've said in some previous sessions, a lot of the good domains are already taken, if you like. So as a brand owner looking to launch a new brand, what do you do? Do you pick up a longer or novel or more unusual brand name? Or do you move towards some of the other TLDs we've talked about? some of the repurposed TLD.ai and .io that we've been mentioning in previous sessions. Um, this, I think, is the last case study, but it goes over a few slides, so please indulge me. Um, so this is looking at blockchain, obviously no, no presentation here will be completely without mentioning blockchain and AI, which will come to the very, very end. Um, so this is looking at uh, registrations for blockchain domains. It's actually not the full set of blockchain domains, it's a, it's a sub-data set. Uh, where we're 